everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're talking about AMD's new Radeon Settings Crimson Edition software today. This is a big deal for AMD. For the last couple of reviews now, the major thing we've complained about with AMD GPUs has been their driver and software support. So if you look back in history for us, go to about June for the R9 380 and R9 390 reviews. And in that review, that joint review, we basically condemned the two cards for poor driver support and said we wouldn't recommend it because of flickering screens and other issues, driver crashes, things like that. Those were later resolved, which changed our stance a bit, but we were still kind of iffy on the driver support overall. Then the Fury X came out, reviewed that, and we said that the drivers hamstrung and these Fury X and Fiji architecture. So again, a ding against AMD for driver and software support. As time went on, we reviewed the 390X in August. And for that card, we said that the drivers were critically improved and felt a lot more comfortable recommending the device going forward. But we were still a little unsure because of some spurious behavior that we saw. Finally, with the 380X about two weeks ago, I wrote in my review that I was confident in recommending, and the, the website itself, Gamers Nexus, all of our staff were fairly confident in recommending the 380X on its driver support because it's, it's improved a lot. So AMD is taking steps in the right direction, and Radeon Settings is a furthering of that. So we're here to review Radeon Settings, which is the new software suite. This is a utility that is replacing Catalyst Control Center, or CCC, which has been around for quite a while, maybe even back to the ATI days. And CCC has been retired, it will be no more. When you install your drivers now, you'll have the option to select Radeon settings or select, as, as it is now, the CCC suite. I don't know if that'll be continued going forward. It seems like they'll kind of phase that out and just only do Radeon settings, but for now that's what's present. So AMD's Radeon settings is a minimalistic approach to the driver package. And it's, basically, it's not a driver itself. It is an application used for accessing driver information, used for cleanly uninstalling drivers. There's a new bundled application for that, so you don't have to go use DDU, which is what we use for our display driver removers in between tests. And the big thing here is a performance increase. So with CCC, the load time was a little bit slower and the install time was certainly slower. And these numbers internally project this, and then we did some of our own validation and found similar results. With the install time alone, not that this is too critical because how many times are you really gonna install drivers? But it does show that they've cleaned up the packaging a little bit. The install time alone, we're seeing about 86 seconds for Radeon settings. And that is when you include the AMD Raptor Gaming Evolved software, which I'm, I'm not a fan of, and I've said that publicly a few times now, but it's part of it, so if you include it, then it's 86 seconds. If you remove it, it's about 15 seconds faster. The Radeon Settings utility is currently, in our press version, 1.1 gigabytes, and the 15.11.1 drivers without Radeon Settings is about 470 megabytes, give or take one megabyte. The reason for that disparity, I'm pretty sure, is because the Radeon Settings package we have bundles all of the Windows versions, support for all the versions, support for all the cards. So it makes it easier in that you have one thing to download for everything, but it makes it larger, obviously. And I'm not sure how they're gonna differentiate that on the website or if they're just gonna do one package. But it is a bit bigger, but it installs faster and the boot up time is much faster as well. So you, you now see a boot up time of less than one second when launching Radeon settings. It's a really good thing. AMD's done very well in that department. and that makes it a bit faster than CCC, depending on how you run the numbers. But either way, less than a second to boot it up. And then other features like iFinity have improved in their speed as well. So now iFinity has a one-click quick setup button that you can use to immediately detect, locate, and set up your multi-display device configurations. A couple of things here talking about performance metrics that you'll see from AMD and other sites today and about the driver support going forward. So again, Radeon Settings is a software suite. In terms of driver support, this is 15.11.1 beta. It is not a new driver package, and it's just adding the software to 15.11.1, replacing CCC. That means that when you see charts from AMD claiming a 20% performance gain over the previous drivers, what they're referring to is 15.7.1, which is really kind of old at this point, and that's 
a, a lot different from saying 15.11.1, which is the one everyone's been using recently, especially with Battlefront and Fallout and Black Ops 3 and every other game that's come out recently, you need 15.11.1 to get good performance. So you probably already have it, which means you will see no performance gain in terms of gaming FPS from installing this Crimson software. And that's something I really disagree with AMD's presentation of data there. I disagree that it is a good thing or a realistic thing to say that there's a 20% performance improvement because the asterisk hanging next to that number indicates that they're talking about 15.7.1, which realistically not very many people are using at this point, or at least not anyone watching this channel who stays on top of things like hardware news and drivers and things like that. This is something that NVIDIA has done in the past as well, so I can't really ding them too hard, but I just, I, it's 0% performance gain basically is how I would present it. But the important thing here that AMD is doing well is they've promised six Wickle driver updates per year. And that means that they're certified, they're Microsoft certified for Windows, so they're not just beta drivers. And that's a lot more than recently. They had, I think, about three this year. And that's better still than the previous second half of 14, 2014, the first half of 2015, where there were zero driver updates for, I think it was like 180 days. So Andy's trending in the right direction. And this new six week old driver updates per year, if they can stick to it through 2016, is going to be a big deal for them, especially with improving their game ready day one launch driver support, something that they've started to catch up with recently, but still straggled on some games like Fallout 4. And overall, they, they are trending in the correct direction for their driver support and frequency of launches. So the review part of this content is really just talking about all of the performance data that we've already given you in terms of the boot up time, load time, stuff like that. But we're also here to run through the major updates and items in Crimson software or Radeon settings or Radeon software. It's, it's had a lot of names. And to talk about those names, the versioning works like this. There is first Radeon settings is the name as I understand it now. That's the name of the software package. Then you see Crimson Edition in this case. And Crimson Edition is, it's a shade of red, first of all, Crimson. AMD says they will continue using shades of red, different ones for every major iteration of the software, effectively a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 type of thing. AMD says that they want to do one of these per year. So you'll have one new shade of red per year. And then after that, there's a number identifier like the existing 15.11 or similar items, but it's basically just the year dot month. So that's how that works. We've got it explained in the article if that went by too quickly. The other major things here, just checking my notes from our written review, would be the test case automation and manual testing. AMD has added 100% more automated test cases to try and improve their drivers. They've added 25% more manual test cases. And a test case is basically, I, I have a lot of them on the sheet actually for our own testing. A test case is when you have a number of steps to run through something that could create a problem. So you run through functionality, a test engineer designs a test case, a technician will execute it, and then they try to find where are the problems with the software. So AMD's added a lot more of those. That's a good thing. One thing that I really like is the per game overclocking. So you can set profiles per game. If you say, if you need four FPS in Fallout 4, say you're hitting 56 and you really want 60, but you can't quite get it, but maybe an overclock pushes you there because that, that is within realistic range of overclocking to get a couple extra FPS. So you could set a profile to only overclock for Fallout 4, which is a good thing because we generally advise against running permanent long-term overclocking profiles on your card for everything and idle use and everyday use because it really just beats up the silicon and it's not good for the card. So you can do per game profiles for overclocking. That is a big plus. And then there's global application of game settings. If you want to set settings for your games through software rather than through the game for some reason, that's not something I really care to do. I don't do it with GeForce Experience and I won't do it with this, but you can do that globally. Or if you install AMD's Raptor suite, then you can do it per game individually and set all the settings there. I really don't like the Gaming Evolved app. It's slow, it doesn't work well on higher resolutions, doesn't scale properly, it's, it feels kind of bloated. And that is the opposite of how I feel about the Crimson Edition Radeon settings, Radeon software suite. It's the opposite of bloated. It's actually very lean and quick and agile. And that's something that the Gaming Evolved app is not. So I would opt to not install that on personal computers if I weren't testing it. Everything's significantly faster. Usability is improved for new users. 
CPU consumption I saw at about 3% max. I never saw more than that, and that was when actively using the software was closer to one or zero when it was in the background, and memory consumption was about 180 megabytes max. So overall, this is really a, a pretty good move for AMD. The driver is, or the, the software I should say, is well designed, it is well built, it is fast, it is clean. All of these things, I know that perhaps the major point of criticism will come from users who are used to CCC and feel like this is a dumbing down of their input as a technical user, and that is certainly true. There is a bit of, it removes a bit of the advanced technical feel when you eliminate all the sort of nested submenus one after the other. It's, but that's an old, messy way to do it, and the industry is moving away from that. CCC is still being sort of adapted into Crimson. It's still being consumed by it. Eventually, I would expect to see all of the options there, but most of them are presently there, and what's lacking, you can launch a CCC window and access them the old-fashioned way. I am pretty happy with this overall. I would suggest downloading it if you have AMD. If you have problems with it, let us know, because I didn't really see any major problems, but I only tested it on one hardware configuration, and you can read what that was on the website. So that's all for this time. Check the Patreon link in the post roll video after this video ends. And thank you for watching. We really enjoy making the content. As I've said, it's a lot of fun to do this stuff. We just upgraded to a table. And, uh, and that's because of the viewership and because you guys are sharing all the content. And we much appreciate that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.